Well, good morning, Roseville Baptist Church, and glad to be here with you this morning, even though we had some technological difficulties that made our live stream not function, and so brought some of the equipment here to my house, and I thought I'd just go ahead and do a recording of uh, a Bible lesson this morning that was actually very different than the one that I had originally planned on preaching this morning from the book of 1 Corinthians, but as things happened and as problems continued to compound on one another, it just really began to make me think about uh, what do we do when things don't go as planned? How do we react? Uh, what should our our thoughts be as Christians when, when, when the plans that we have really just fall apart and get messed up? I mean, we had, we do service planning every single week. We had tried to pre-test a lot of the equipment. We had some technological issues this last Wednesday. We thought we had gotten that worked out. We knew that there's been a lot of problems with churches being able to stream because even Facebook is put out there and, and YouTube and many others have said, hey, we've been having all these problems because so many people have been trying to get online right now that it, the traffic was just massive. And so we thought we had mitigated a lot of those problems, but this time the just something else came up. And so how do we respond now when things don't go that way? I mean, we all have lots and lots of plans, and I was reminded of the verse in Proverbs 16 that says, a man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. So we all make plans, but then there are many times when those plans don't come to fruition. When things maybe within our control, maybe sometimes outside of our control, they they take over. And so how should we respond? And as I was driving home from the church today, I was trying to think about, and, and then I sat on the couch for a few minutes, and my family was uh, watching another message by another church, and I was listening to the end of that message and just being reminded that God is good all the time, no matter what's going on, even when our plans don't come out like we thought they would. And I began to think about who in the Bible can we look at to maybe get some some understanding, maybe get a glimpse of how we should respond when things don't go like we plan. And I began to think in John chapter 11, there is a couple of women known as Mary and Martha, and they had a brother named Lazarus, and something I guarantee you did not go as they had planned. Let's read in John chapter 11. I invite you to open up your Bible with me as I read along. In John chapter 11, beginning in verse 1, the Bible says this, now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. And so the sisters, they sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. And I think this really, even at this moment, brings us to principle number one that we need to think about when things don't go as planned, and that God is using all things to, for His purposes to bring glory to Himself. The verse in Romans chapter 8 that talks about how God is working all things for the good of those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. Not just some things, not just the things that go as planned, not just the things that go smoothly, but all things God is using. And even here, in this particular passage, Jesus gets word that a, a close friend of his is very sick. A, a brother of these two sisters is very, very sick. And they knew that he had the power to heal. They had, they had seen him do it. They had heard many, many stories about him healing people from all kinds of diseases. And so they knew that Jesus had the power to do it. All he had to do was say it, and it would be so. But Jesus, even here, begins to remind us that sometimes when God doesn't answer our prayers or doesn't show up in the exact moment that we expect or when God changes the plan a bit, he is doing this for his glory. He is doing this to bring about his ultimate will. That's hard for us to understand sometimes, and I guarantee you it was not on my agenda to be sitting here in my living room recording this video today. And I don't even necessarily know why God is doing it, but 
I know that he has a purpose behind it, and I have to believe that that's what it is because that's what the Scripture teaches us. But in the midst of this, let's not forget, in verse 5 it says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And so principle number two that we really need to remember when things don't go as planned, that we should never, ever doubt Jesus' love for you. Don't ever doubt that God is... He has forgotten you, or he has abandoned you, or he has turned his back on you. Just because things don't go like we planned doesn't mean that God has forsaken us, that God doesn't love us anymore. In fact, Jesus, in that very previous verse, says that these things are done for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. And then it's interesting how in the very next verse, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister, And Lazarus. Sometimes our thoughts and our feelings can can really take over and they can really just make us feel beaten down because things didn't go exactly like we planned. But never, ever doubt God's love for you. Then continuing on in the passage, when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place that he was. So, Jesus still loved him and Martha and Mary, but God didn't move exactly at the moment that the call went out to him. After this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. So the disciple says, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you and you're going there again? And then Jesus answered them in a very confusing way. And then in verse 11, after saying these things, he said to them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But I go to awaken him. So the disciples said in verse 12, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Oh, this is good. Sleep is what someone needs when they're sick. Why do we need to go now, Lord? If he's just sleeping, he's going to recover. And so in verse 12, we we get reminded that we don't always understand what God is doing or even what he's saying. We get reminded that in the midst of things not going as we planned, we won't always understand. As I've already said, I'm sitting here this morning, I'm sitting here right now thinking that this, I just don't understand why God would have had the technology do what it did. And there was even a moment this morning when when t- the things weren't working out that I sat down and I was praying and I was saying, God, please just make it work for this one hour. Just give us that live stream time. Just let everything function like it's supposed to. But it didn't. I don't understand why it didn't. I'm still in many ways sitting here flabbergasted trying to figure out what went wrong. But I once again, as I come to the scriptures, I have to think that God had a purpose in this, even when I don't understand what it is. So then they travel back and they go and they find, they begin to get close to, Jesus and his disciples began to get close to Bethany where Mary and Martha were. And it says in verse 20 that when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. So Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Martha knew that Jesus could have healed him. Martha knew without a shadow of a doubt this was not a lack of faith issue. This was not as she she questioned God's ability. She knew it. And she even said directly to Jesus, if you had just been here, and have you ever been in one of those moments in your prayer time or, or when you didn't understand what was going on and you, you call out and you say, God, what happened? Why did you allow this? This isn't fair. This isn't right. This doesn't make sense. Please, Lord, just help me to understand. As Martha began to call out and talk to Jesus and just meet with him, she did say in verse 22, but even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give it to you. So Lord, I I wish you would have done it this way, but even now, even in this moment, even when I don't understand, God, please, Jesus, please, I know that God the Father will hear you. 
I know that he will answer exactly whatever his will is. And a few verses later, even though Mary, it says in verse 20, as Martha rushed out to meet Jesus, and Mary, though, says, remain seated in her house, I think she was just too emotionally overwhelmed at that moment to deal with it. Yeah, she trusted Jesus. She knew that Jesus was, uh, the, was who he said he was and that he could save her brother, and that's what she wanted. But I think in that moment, she was just too emotionally overwhelmed. And even though she heard that Jesus was there, she just had to stay sitting for a moment. And I tell you what, there, were, there was a moment this morning when I had been kind of ready to give up. And some of the other guys that were there at the church said, no, we need to do this. We need to keep trying to figure this out. We need to make, we, we can make this work. I, I think we just, we can't give up. This is important. What we do here every single week as a church and as we gather together, even if it's virtually, this is important. And at one point when the computer just decided to die on us again, right in the middle of the, the music time, I just sat down, I just looked around and I said, I, I'm just done. I, and I texted my wife and I just said, I just feel so defeated right now. I, I don't even want to think about this. I don't want to move on. I, I, I can't push myself anymore to keep doing this. You ever been there? You ever felt like, man, I just, I, I'm so tired of being beaten down by things. And I get it that this is a relatively small thing. And maybe some of the things that you felt beaten down with were, were a lot more important or had a lot more long lasting impact than this. And someone even said to me as we were walking out of the church, Hey man, it's only one Sunday you know, we'll, we'll get it back together for next week. But in that moment, it just felt so big and it felt, I, I felt so pushed down. I didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to be comforted. I didn't want it to get fixed because I was just, ugh. I think in some ways that's what Mary was feeling. She just couldn't even pull herself up. But in verse 31, when the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her uh, they, they said that Jesus is looking at her. They saw Mary rise quickly and go out. Jesus had been calling for her. And so they saw her rise quickly and go out and they followed her, that supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. And so she had been so distraught in the house that she couldn't even go out to meet Jesus. But when Jesus began to call for her, she rises up and the people thought, oh, great, she's going to go weep over the tomb some more. But then, no, she runs to Jesus. I tell you, it was, it was kind of an encouraging thing for me as I was even sitting on my couch for a few minutes and listening to someone else preach and just say, don't forget that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Even when things don't go as planned, even when uh, our best laid plans get messed up, what a blessing it is that we can always run to him. That we can run to Christ and find comfort and find encouragement. She poured it out to him though. She said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And then when Jesus saw her weeping, he was deeply moved. In verse 33, Mary begins to weep in front of Jesus and I think that we need to be reminded of that sometimes as Christians, especially when our plans don't go the way that we thought they would. It's okay to go to God and just kind of weep. At another moment this morning, I, I was looking around and <laughs> I said, all right, guys, I'll, I'll see you all later. I'm just going to go home and cry now. Because it just fell apart. And then I was reading through this and I was thinking, okay, good. So I was in pretty good company, I guess. <laughs> that sometimes you just want to go and you just want to be alone. 
You just want to be with one of your most trusted friends maybe here on this earth or maybe you need to just get alone with God and you just need to cry for a little bit because things have just fallen apart. But if we will stay close to him and if we won't give up, if we will continue to just trust his word, and that he is, going back to verse 4, it is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Then we get to verses 38 through 44, where the miracle gets performed. Where Jesus goes up to the tomb and he tells them to roll away the stone. And they say, Lord, he's been dead for four days now. It's going to stink. He says, just do it. So they roll away the stone and he says, Lazarus, come forth. Many biblical scholars believe the reason Jesus had to say, Lazarus, come forth, is because if he had just said, come forth, then all the dead in that area would have been resurrected. But Jesus very specifically called out to Lazarus. And even though Mary and Martha didn't understand it, and even though the disciples didn't understand it, and even though people, all the mourners around didn't understand in that moment, finally, when they saw the resurrection take place, when they saw Lazarus' body begin to shadow that tomb and then finally come out into the light of day, and Jesus says, go, unwrap him. Let him loose. Finally, in that moment, then they would have been able to see and understand why God had allowed it to happen. But in those moments, I tell you what, it doesn't discount the fact that we still feel the pain, the heartache, the hurt. That we still feel those, 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 those aches. Even when we finally get to see the reason that many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in Jesus. Maybe this is the message that God, I have to believe that this is the message that God had more wanted me to preach today rather than continuing on in our study in 1 Corinthians. So he ripped apart and crashed down everything else that we had planned. So that way, this video would go out today. I don't know where you are today and maybe you're sitting somewhere and thinking or maybe you're now watching this on your phone or in your living room or maybe you're taking a break at work and trying to watch this video and you're thinking, yeah, I, my plans haven't been going like I thought. Just let me encourage you this morning to not give up. Maybe you're not going to see the reason for it for a few days or a few weeks or a few months or perhaps even a few years or you might not even see the reason for it on this side of eternity there might be something that God is doing uh, in, in the life of a friend a relative a neighbor that you won't ever see but God had to bring you through this moment right now God had to bring you through this trying time so that way, he would be seen and people would believe in him. Maybe you're watching this video this morning, you're not sure what it means to believe in Jesus Christ or what it means to trust in him. Let me encourage you that God is good. God is using every circumstance in your life to try to draw you to himself. He loves you. He wants to forgive you of all of your sins, whether you feel like you deserve it or whether you don't. God's grace and mercy can reach you wherever you are. All you have to do is simply admit to God that you are a sinner. Believe what Jesus Christ did on the cross and then three days later, he conquered death by coming back to life. And that's what we celebrate in just a couple of weeks on Easter Sunday. Really, it's what we celebrate every Sunday. We celebrate the fact that we serve a risen Savior and He is alive today and He has conquered the power of sin and death and He offers free forgiveness for you. All you have to do is accept it and say, yes, Lord, please save me.
even right now, right where you are. Don't wait another moment. If you're feeling the conviction of God right now in your heart saying, yes, I need Jesus to save me, then simply pray and ask him to forgive you right now, and he will. Christian, maybe you're in a place today where you're thinking, yeah, you know, my plans haven't going, been going the way that I had expected them to. I haven't really been trusting God that he is going to use these things to bring about his glory and to teach me something about himself. But I want to trust him more today. I want to let him take over and become the planner in my life. You can do that even right now. Since we're separated, I, I encourage you maybe as a way of trying to encourage others in the comment line below, wherever you might be, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, just say, God spoke to me today. You don't have to get specific if you don't want to, but maybe say, I, I need to trust God more today. Let's be there to encourage each other. God convicted me today. Maybe you'd even say that I made the decision to accept Jesus as my Savior today. We want to praise and rejoice with you for this wonderful decision that you've made. Simply comment below and say that, I asked Jesus to forgive me today, or I made the decision for Jesus to be my Savior today. We'd like to rejoice with you because I guarantee you right now, if you've made that decision, heaven is rejoicing. Jesus is smiling. God is saying, welcome to my family. You are now one of my children. So no matter what may happen, no matter where we might be, what has God been teaching you through these uncertain times, through these unplanned times, through these scheduled changes of the last few weeks and life maybe being a little out of kilter, out of normal? What is God trying to show you about himself? What is God trying to teach you about yourself? And how can you draw closer to him today because of this passage in John chapter 11? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for this time, Lord, that you continue to teach us more about who we are as your people. Draw us closer to you. Show us where we don't always measure up. And Lord, allow us to yield to the conviction of the Holy Spirit today. Whether it's just to trust in you more when our plans go awry as Christians or whether we need to turn to you for salvation, Lord, to start that walk, that relationship with you. Thank you, God, that you never leave us nor forsake us, that you always have open arms ready to forgive. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, and again, I encourage you, let's encourage one another to comment below and share what God has done in our hearts today. God bless.